Eric Eze E. Wright died at the young age of 30 on March 26th, 1995 just 10 days after he announced to the public that he had been diagnosed with AIDS. Better known for being one of the founders of then super rap group NWA, he also succeeded very well in his solo career. Most will agree that he is the godfather of gangster rap. His death is very controversial, and there are many conspiracy theories. So, uh, this is a new thing, right? Yeah. See, if somebody going to do something about it, see, right. technology is so high, right? Right. So if you shoot somebody, you go to jail forever. So the kids, you don't want to go to jail forever, right? right? So they got this new thing out that people sell them all the time. They got this stuff to call, they get blood from somebody with AIDS, yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Easy, easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Easy, easy yeah. thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Easy, easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Way to lighten the mood. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, Suge's terror alert level just went <laughs> from elevated to high. This is pretty unbelievable that he would uh, say this on live television, especially on ABC, a network in which Disney owns. There is no doubt that Suge Knight is crazy as hell. And I definitely believe that, um, you know, like like many others, that he was involved in Easy es death. Now, you can make the argument that Easy e had slept with a ton of women. He's even said that he would never use a condom. But according to uh, Wishbone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Me personally, I do as well because I mean, even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So I mean, just just rationally thinking something, some had to go on. Yeah, and, and it's just and it's just ironic because you know, I know people can live with HIV for years and look normal and look healthy, but, but when you're about to die from AIDS, full-blown AIDS, you're gonna look like you're gonna die from AIDS. I've seen people that die from AIDS and they look like they have AIDS. It was known that Eazy -E lived a very promiscuous life, having seven children by six different mothers. He was also asked in an interview if he ever worried about AIDS, but said that he was always careful on who he slept with. Now I know this is just the movie, but in this scene, Shug Knight tells Eazy -E, Don't make me change you, Eric. The fuck's that supposed to mean? Keep talking. You're gonna fuck around and get smoked. And honestly, that sounds pretty different then don't make me hurt you. But I don't know, tell me what you think about that. If you think about it closely, the studio incident, according to uh, Jerry Heller, the manager of NWA, he said that this, this incident happened in 1991. Eazy-E died of pneumonia caused by HIV in 1995. Crazy fact, 1995 was actually one of the worst years for AIDS with an all-time high in deaths. Now it's possible Suge Knight may have injected him with the HIV slash AIDS when they jumped Eazy-E at the studio. After you get exposed to HIV, you start to feel sick, like a fever, a uh, cough, just because the virus is new to your body. However, without treatment, it could take at least 10 years for most people with HIV to develop AIDS. So either Easy e had HIV for a while and just didn't know about it, or maybe the HIV just developed quicker in him, causing him to get pneumonia. Easy e had asthma, so that could be the case. Kind of like with COVID, uh, whoever had asthma was at like a greater risk of having a harder time battling the virus. Maybe that was like the case with him. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so this is just my this is just my theory, you know. But then again, if he did have it for a while and he didn't infect anybody with it, that's just strange. That's why everybody's kind of tripping out. Also, something that I noticed um, back to the movie uh, after the studio scene, every other scene with Easy E, you could kind of see like his health start to deteriorate. Um, you see him like sniffling and coughing a lot. With the other characters being like, hey man, are you okay? Or something like that. It's it's actually very, it's a trip. If you actually watch it and you notice it, it's actually a, it's actually a trip. So a couple theories I have are that Suge Knight and his people injected Eazy -E with the HIV. It was known that Suge and Eazy hated each other. Eazy -E was actually planning on killing Suge, but Jerry Heller talked Eazy out of it. Later saying he regretted not letting Eazy -E kill Suge, saying he'd be doing the world a favor. I guess they didn't respect my talent. <laughs> You know, so now they're suffering the consequences. Easy, -E, you're dropping like a brick, boy. See ya. <laughs> Dr. Dre had his own personal reasons to want Easy E dead. He's actually the one that set up Easy E and uh, Shug Knight at the studio. Dre wasn't happy with his contract. He wasn't happy with Jerry Heller, so he just wanted out. Easy E and Jerry Heller didn't want to release Dre, so that's why Shug stepped up and you know pretty much forced Easy E to sign 
to pr to pretty much release Dre from his contract so he could sign with Death Row. Another interesting thing is that on Snoop Dogg's 1993 Doggy Style album, there was a track in which Daz says, Hey yo, what's up with them dudes that was on the TV dissing you? Dre responds with, man, fuck them dudes. I ain't thinking about that old shit, man. Daz then says, bust the ass HIV pussy ass motherfuckers. This is either very ironic because Easy died of AIDS two years later. I mean, unless they knew something, you know? And then another theory that I got is um, that the government did it. Now this one I, I don't I don't I don't believe this one too too much, but at one point you know the FBI was all over uh, NWA you know they were the world's most dangerous group you know music wise obviously it was obvious that law enforcement didn't like NWA they felt threatened and who knows maybe they found a way to inject HIV into um, Eazy E kind of like the leader of the pack, but I mean I don't believe it too much I do believe that Shug is mostly responsible for this. But then again, it could, honestly, it could go either way, but I'm leaning towards um, Shug. But the reason I think Shug is just because he's been linked to a few deaths. You know, he ran somebody over and killed them on the set of uh, Straight Outta Compton. It's just weird, man, I don't know. He, he held vanilla ice by the ankles off of like a fucking, um, what is it, off a balcony, dude. Like, he, he could have killed the guy. I, I Like, I just think, uh, I just think Shug's got it in him to do some evil shit like that. But I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I think this is a, this story's got a crazy conspiracy to it. Um, bunch of theories on it. You know, you, it's honestly, I mean, I don't know. It's a trip. Tell me what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all are dope. See you on the next one. Peace out.